Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Welcome, uh, thank you. That's too much, but good. <laughs> Wasn't pre-planned at all. Welcome to the Josh Wade Show. My name's Josh Wade. Thank you to The Siege for helping us out with the theme song. Look at what we're fucking doing for you cunts. It's amazing. Uh, we got some shows uh, coming up in Sydney and Melbourne very soon with the Woke Bloke Tour. But tonight, we are here with our little fucked up family in Brisbane. How you doing, everybody? Good-o, good-o. And tonight on, t on the podcast, uh, we're going to be learning about each other, right? And I'm going to be talking a little bit more about, because I, I haven't had the chance to on the podcast to talk uh, about my life and, and, and how I got to be to where I am now, because it's been a fucking roller coaster. Just by a raise of hands so I can get a fucking idea uh, who here is reckon they've been on the journey with me for quite a while, just by a raise of hands. Okay, good. All right, so you knew me when I was fat. <laughs> you knew me when I was skinny. You knew me when I looked like a fucking meth addict for a little bit there. It's funny, I uploaded a photo the other day on Instagram, and uh, maybe about two weeks ago, and I reckon I got maybe 20 comments of people going, meth head, you're pinging off your face, like, eat, you're dying, and then two days later I upload a photo and everyone's going, you look like Kurt Coleman, you look like Kurt Coleman. So I'm a fucking cracky Kurt Coleman, and I'll take it. Uh, that's where I am in my career. But um, what I'm fascinated by, I... Um, uh, and I mean, I'm sure, uh, do you follow me on Instagram? Yeah, I'm guessing. So I started posting some really fucking wacky photos recently. Um, where it, like full fucking, like I'm Bruno, tennis court, white turtleneck, fuck me in the asshole shit, yeah? <laughs> and, uh, and I'm uploading these photos because I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, well, for such a long time, for four to five years, right, I've been playing this cunny character, right? I've been selling my brand as this guy called Cunny. Now, in the beginning, it just started out as this young 18-year-old fuckwit talking to people at music festivals and being absolutely as outrageous as possible, right? Because I always saw it as like Borat. I fucking loved Borat and I loved watching the footy show because they'd have those people do the street talk. Now, I'm not sure if many of you come from back when I was doing those interview days. That was a while ago, right? And I was oblivious and I said some fucking terrible things to people <laughs> at music festivals. Come here, you dumb slut. That shit just wouldn't pass today, but at the time it was a character, right? And then that eventually ended up evolving. Now, cunny, essentially, that, that word came from me going, well, I can't say cunt that much because YouTube was demonetizing me. So it was a money-making scheme, essentially. Um, so I started using this word cunny, 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 and I was using that the whole time. And then I made a video called uh, Shit Aussie Say. And we're talking about that backstage because Zach, one of the guys I work with, he said, how did this even begin for you like you know from what you guys have seen you've probably just come across my stuff obviously once I've already been something but this all began back when I was probably 12 years old right and this shit's still on my channel but on private the exact same channel right so I would go on iMovie and I'd get on photo booth and I'd record myself doing stupid shit lip syncing to songs and stuff like that and I'd upload them to YouTube and then I'd get my friends to get involved with it as well. So I'd coax them into it and they would do it with me, but they weren't funny and I fucking was. So <laughs> they stopped doing it. And then by grade 10, I'm still doing it. Now I've become the kid at school that everyone knows about, that one kid that's got the fucking YouTube channel. Everyone's like, he's might be autistic, we don't know. Um, <laughs> but I was so fucking full of myself while at the same time being so severely insecure it was fucking unbelievable. So during this time as well, I was suffering severe, severe, severe anxiety and depression. Like my parents, we, I had a fucked up childhood, like from maybe, you know, I would say to 13 years old, my childhood was fine. But by 12 to 13, domestic violence started seeping into it and the whole family unit fell apart. And I was being shipped around from mum and dad's place like fucking every week and then they'd kick me out and I wasn't allowed to live with one because the partner hated me because I was a smart ass, but I won. And, but, um, and it was this, this wacky thing and YouTube just seemed to be creating videos and trying to connect with people outside of 
my immediate realm, which was school, the fuckwits that you've got no choice to be friends with. It's like Al Switch. It's like, well, I don't fucking know who you are. You're a cunt, but we're all in this together. So let's just get out. <laughs> that was heavy, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, we'll keep it. Um, and by grade 10, I mean, I, I was in this position where my dad was beating the shit out of me. He'd call it a clip around the ear, but it was never a clip around the ear. Uh, I couldn't live with him because him and his partner didn't like me. My mum and her partner, they fucking hated me. My mum's partner was a uh, school principal, an ex-police officer. And um, he was a fucking cunt to me as well. And I wasn't a wild child. I was never into drugs. I think that's one major misconception that I've always had. And it's probably my own fault because I've sold it. But I've never done any other drug but weed and steroids. I injected steroids into my ass. Um, seriously, they're the only two things I've done. Never done a pinger, never done anything else because I'm terrified of it. So... The character that I presented to people for such a long time was simply just the opposite of what I was, right? So then the, the tradie bogan thing came in, right? The throwing the shirt on and, and you know, fucking, uh, what's, you know, there's a video called Shit Aussie Say that I made that was sort of the first one that Cunny did and it was like, Leash, do you want a cruiser and fucking, no, yeah, shut the fuck up, neighbours is on, that sort of stuff. And, uh, and that's where Cunny was born. So I ran with it because it was the first thing that finally stuck. No one watched my shit in high school, but all of a sudden I uploaded this video and fucking went, right? For six years I'd spent so much time working for nothing at all and then eventually it fucking happened, right? And this is a theme we're going to talk a little bit more about tonight. It's this digging for gold, digging for gold, digging for gold, digging for gold, getting nowhere, giving up, trying again, trying again, trying again, and then fucking winning, right? I'm very much about this. So this video goes nuts, right? It goes well. And I thought, fuck, all right, we're off to the races with this one. My whole idea was to always, and we're going to cut some footage here of this because I don't think people um, believe me when I say this, but when I was 15, I was so delusional which we'll get into delusion as well, but I was so delusional that I saw a theatre in Townsville, right? I had 200 seats in it, and I said, I'm going to do a one-hour show there. And I went to my music teacher at school, because that was the only person I knew had a fucking contact, and I said, can you help me, like, put on a show? Like, we'll hire the theatre, and I'll go get some photos done, and we'll make a poster, and then I'll go put the poster around at the universities and other schools and stuff like that, because all the people at the other schools know who I am from me fucking autistic YouTube videos. <laughs> and there'll be $10 a ticket, and we'll sell them on the night, at the door. And she goes, yep, okay. So we did it. It fucking sold out, more than what it is tonight. <laughs> And I fucking won. At, at, at 15, I did a one-hour show, right? So that's when it all clicked, is that I can use these YouTube videos to sell tickets for people to come and see me live, right? So now I'm doing cunny this whole time. Cunny, 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 cunny. I got the cunt fucking tattooed on me fucking finger, all right? <laughs> Drunk one night in Adelaide with some fuckwit. It was his birthday, and he wanted a birthday gift, and he said, get that tattooed on you, and I was fucking, you know inebriated as all shit and um, got it done. But I kind of regret it, but then I don't because I was like, it was a moment in my life. Someone wanted me to get my own word tattooed on me, so whatever. But who has their own word? So anyway, this keeps going on, this keeps going on. And then we get to about, I would say, a year and a half ago. I remember reading this status on Facebook on some page and, uh, and it said, anyone that says cunny instead of cunt, uh, is a fuckwit and should die. Yeah, and it was on like a big meme page. I forget which one it was, but... Um, and I went, oh, okay. That hurt a lot. It really actually really hurt a lot. Like, I... Uh, you know those moments where you... Something happens and that anxiety just clicks and you feel that whitewash go over and you're like, oh, shit. Like, we're going to have to sit down for a little while here and this is going to... This might be a day, this might be two days, I don't know how long it's going to be. Very simple thing, but enough, right? Because I took it personally. But I also realised at this point that Cunny had left my realm by this point. It wasn't my word anymore. It was like Chris Lilly when he said Ranger as Jonah, and then now it's just, it's a thing, right? Um, I went, fuck, okay. 
So I went, right, I'm never going to do it again. I'm never going to use that word again. I remember every status I put, everything I did, I meticulously made sure that I didn't say it at all because I was terrified of having to go through that experience again where someone thought I was a fuckwit for saying it or it was overused. I was, I was, I'd killed the joke so much that it was over, right? And it was the worst but best thing that ever happened to me because I got sick and tired of caring about what I said, right? Walking, if I want to say the fucking goddamn word, I'll say the fucking word, and if you fucking get upset about it, then that's your own fucking problem. Deal with it, you dumb cunt, right? <laughs> but at the same time, I also realised, I was like, I need to retire this, right? Because I'm playing high school games in my head, right? We all did this in high school, right? We all have that mask, right? We still do it now. We still do it now, except I, I, I've... I feel like I'm escaping that trap and I'm fucking doing really well at it. We wear that mask, right? When you're going into a situation, we act different. What's your name, dude? Yeah. Tani? Yep. You got, obviously, you are look like a blokey bloke, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And you, you've got, you know, mates, I guess. Are you a different person in front of your mates than right now? A little bit? Are you a bit more fucking ocker? Yeah, you ready to get fucked up? Do it for the boys, that sort of shit, yeah? That's the mask I'm talking about. I was never do it for the boys. Look at the fucking shoes I'm wearing right now. I look like my father is a fucking Korean billionaire. And he's not. They're on my Amex, I don't own them. Um, but what I'm saying is I, I was always trying to fit in at school, right? So Cunny was essentially an extension of me at school. I was mates with the footy boys. And I wasn't a footy boy, I'm there doing drama and dancing around like a bloody woolly wolf, you know? as mum would say, but I was trying to fit in with the blokes. And I did that so fucking well, so well, that I made a character out of it, I monetized it, and I gained a million people that follow me online because of one thing that I never fucking was. I am the greatest fraud, the biggest facade, right? And last year, like, that, that was that domino, that, that reading that status was like, right, do I really want to continue my life based in high school thinking, right, trying to appeal to everyone, going out, getting fucked up with people after a show and trying to be one of the boys when I'm not one of the fucking boys? I'm not here in my life to be relatable. I'm here to be understood, right? Two very different things. And I, and I realised this when not long ago when I was posting these fucking Bruno tennis fucking court photos... The hot ones, yeah? Yeah, you liked them, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> She's going to slip off her chair. But, um... <laughs> oh, fuck. Had to be funny for a second. And, um... That's something Connie would probably say. I slipped back into it. It's like a fucking... I'm possessed. But anyway... <laughs> fucking, what was I saying? Now I'm just thinking about you slipping off the chair. <laughs> I'm visually seeing you go... Whoa! Could be worse, you could swallow it. Anyway, uh, that's not good. Uh, all right, we're moving past that. I'm still in that mind frame. What the fuck was I saying? Someone help me. I'm freaking out. Tennis photos. Tennis photos. Fuck yeah. Right, we're good. We're going. We're still going. All right. We're at the tennis photos. And someone commented on it. They said, bring Cunny back. You're not relatable anymore. I went, fuck. I'm not relatable anymore. That's the one thing we all try and be. We all try and fucking do it. We're all just trying to relate to our fucking mates, get along with everyone, right? I realised in that I don't want to be fucking relatable. I don't want my life at all, zero of it, to be related to yours, right? And I don't want your life to be anything like fucking mine. You have one life and then you die. That's it. You're dead, right? And you want someone to get up at your fucking funeral and go, oh, yeah, well, he was just like Robbo, just like Pete, just like... Get fucked, cunt, right? My fucking funeral is my fucking last show. I got that motherfucking plan. There's flamethrowers in it, all right? I'm not going to... There's a joke that popped in my head and I went, probably won't do it. Uh, it was an Al Switch joke. But anyway... Um, yeah, she just clicked with you, didn't it? Yep. Um, see ya. Um, 
Don't be relatable, be understood. Now, delusion is another thing that I'm, I'm very fascinated by, right? Because my dreams growing up was always the same, right? This has always been it. There's been no, 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 no way of failure. Failure doesn't exist, okay? And I'm, I know I sound like I'm preaching, but I, I, I really, you take this in. If you fucking want to take it, take it. If you think it's bullshit, that's fine, okay? That's fine as well. I'm not here to tell you that this is right or wrong. I'm just telling you from my experience. But delusion and there, there is no such thing as failure, right? Because there's never a situation that you put yourself in life ever, right, where you're doing it, you're doing it, you're doing it, and then a magical person comes out of the sky and goes, okay, you failed and now you can't do it again. You can always try and do something again and again and again. There's never a time where it's like, you will never be able to do this ever again now you failed, ever. There's no such thing as failure. There's giving the fuck up, all right? Now, what I find and what the position that I've found myself extremely fucky, fucking lucky to be in, right, is that for so many years playing cunny, people would write, you're a funny cunt, you're a funny cunt, you're a funny cunt, you're a faggot, you're a funny cunt, right? <laughs> a mixture of comments, right? But I started to realise that by this point, all I was trying to do was serve myself because I was insecure, okay? I was trying to reaffirm and get that approval. I'm still funny, I'm still funny, I'm still funny. Then some kind of comment on a video, you're fucking falling off, mate. You're not that funny anymore. I'd be like, get fucked, cunt. Look at you with your fucking, you standing in front of your fucking 1941 fucking holding fucking whatever. Your profile picture, you fucking fuckwit. But anyway, <laughs> I'd always go onto people's profiles that talk shit and I'd look at it and go, I feel great. Um, <laughs> Do you do that as well? Yeah, when the bitches, yeah. You're a bitch. Yeah? It's a vibe. Mm -hmm. I forgot what I was talking about then as well. I go on, what was I talking about? Don't smoke weed. People, yeah, but not before that. Help. Never giving up. Oh, I give up. Uh, <laughs> Delusion. Let's just, let's just cut back into delusion and failure. Um, delusion is key, right? Because this whole world is a delusion anyway, right? This is all an illusion. Your reality are your, is your beliefs. What you see and what you choose to see and, and hear during the day is what you want to hear and see, right? Now, I know that's really cliche and you fucking hear cunts go, oh, Read, read fucking The Secret and you can manifest things if you sit in bed all night and you think about it and you, you'll get there, mate. Bullshit. You can work hard and put yourself in that reality and it will come to you because there is no choice, because there is no such thing as failure, but there's not magical shit in the sky that's going, he's thinking about it, mate. Give him the fucking golden dildo, whatever the fuck you're wishing for. I don't know. Right? Delusion is key. Right? I came up with this analogy uh, the other day, and I, I'm trying to get it right, but it was like, um, delusion is simply, oh, no, nah, fuck it, I don't know it. <laughs> when I remember it, you'll see it in the podcast, because I'll get Connor to do an overlay of it, and then you guys can all pretend I said it, and you went, wow, <laughs> fuck, this cunt really is Jesus. Um, but these are, these are the little things that I've learned from my experience. And right now, when I started this podcast, right, I, I met with Connor, uh, and Connor is the guy behind the camera there. Give him a round of applause because he makes this all happen. <laughs> we, uh, we met on one fateful night, New Year's Eve 2016. Yeah, going into 2017. And uh, we were in Broad Beach together, and we met because uh, one of my other friends who's a comedian, his name's Elliot Loney, was there, and Connor had just done a film. Now, Connor is a very similar... Uh, Breed, right? So Connor went out at what age were you? 19. 19. Connor went out at 19 years old. He wrote a film, right? Wrote an entire film. Then he went to go get it funded. No one would fund it. So he went and got a bank loan, made the film, and then sold it to Channel 9 just recently at the start of this year, right? You just do it. You just do it. That's it. It's that simple. Be delusional and fucking do it, right? And that's the one thing that I've noticed. Oh, my fucking testicles just went in my throat. But 
that's the one thing that I feel like people, uh, people miss out on. You've sold on no already. Oh, that's, that might be a little bit too hard. I was just doing a show in Adelaide recently and I was speaking to this girl during the show and I said, what do you want to do? And I'm going to ask some of you guys this soon. Uh, but I said, what do you want to do? And she goes, a teacher. And I'm like, a teacher? And she's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, oh, no. I said, what are you doing? She said, I'm a teacher. I said, what did you want to do? And she said, uh, I want to be an actor, but that's a bit unrealistic. Oh, fuck, cunt. I fucking went to some fucking bipolar fucking skits out, right? I started freaking out. I'm like, bit unrealistic. Look at what the fuck you're dealing with right now. I, th like, think about this. Not just me, right? But, but anyone else in general that's doing something similar to this, right? I have sold you a ticket to nothing. I have no physical product to sell. Nothing tangible that you can take home, walk away and go, got it, that's what I spent my money on. I've sold you on hopes and fucking dreams, all right? I'm telling you what I've just done and now you're here because I believed it in my own fucking reality, right? And I attracted this, you guys. And hopefully together, instead of me just fucking taking this, hoping you guys go, you're a funny cunt, see you later and I can jack off happy at bedtime... One of you motherfuckers will take something away from this and go, fuck me, I'm just as delusional as this cunt. If this motherfucker can do it, then Jesus Christ, I want to fucking do it as well. All right? Delusion is key, right? Um, I mean, did anyone come tonight with, I mean, I, I put on the, uh, like, ad to come with some questions, even if it's about conspiracies, whatever it is in general, um, did anyone come with anything that they want to ask at all? For fuck's sake, one of you. Zach, give me something. All right, fine. If none of you are going to ask something, I'll just fucking do it myself. Um, what's your name, my man? Jake. Jake. All right, Jake. Do you want to stand up and, and talk up there? Do us a favor. Good. It's just so he can capture you. Jake. All right, I forced Jake up here. Give Jake a round of applause, everybody. Jake. I'm gonna, I'll sit in the light. Jake, my man. What are you doing with yourself? I'm um, Storman. Storman. Yeah. Yep. What does that mean? I uh, basically pick Do you want to hold the mic? We'll start that again. Sorry. Oh, my voice fucking cracked again. Here we go. You basically pick and pack and orders and shit for customers, whatever it is they want. I'm you pick and for. pack orders and stuff like that. Okay, cool. All right. Um, and where are you from? Uh, originally the UK. Yep. And you, did you come alone tonight? Yeah. Oh, fucking good on you. Give him another round of applause. Thank you. So what, what do you watch about the podcast? Like, what made you come tonight, just out of interest? I want to see you live, to be fair. Right, okay. Here I am. <laughs> do you want to have a touch? No, I'm good. Oh, that's some Harvey Weinstein shit. All right, don't worry. <laughs> no, no, good. When did you move here from the UK? Uh, 2001. 2001, yeah. all right. And what did you want to do as a kid? What was, what was that thing as a 15-year-old kicking the soccer ball around? What was the, what was the, the fucking dream? The dream was to become a race car driver. To be a race car driver? Yeah. And when did that dream stop? When I couldn't afford it. When you couldn't afford it? Pretty much. What, what do you need to afford in this? Uh, there's a lot of money in upkeep in the vehicle as well as being able to go to the racetrack and nationally race. Would you still want to do that? By all means, yeah. Yeah? Well, how do you do it? Um, you've got to have sponsorship. Um, being sponsored by companies, whether it be um, a mechanic shop or whether yep. it be the product in the car themselves, like turbos or superchargers or the motors themselves. Did you um, try looking? I went down that track, yeah, but I wasn't a high-profile enough driver for them to sponsor me. You need someone who is actually... Were you starting at the top? Were you going to the big guys? Oh, shit, no. <laughs> You've got to start small. Pardon? No, you got to start small. Uh-huh. Or maybe you have to start fucking smaller. I don't know. How did everyone else do it? Um, well, to be fair, they had a lot better reputation than myself and they went to the bigger guys because they had the reputation. They weren't born with a bigger reputation, my man. No, they earned it. They earned it on the track and they earned it with their performance and their, and their times because it's all time sack. So how do you do that? How do you make your reputation better so you can walk back to those motherfuckers that rejected you and go, 
Look at my reputation now, bitch. Uh, consistency and continually doing the same thing as well as applying everything you can to it. Okay. Do you like your job right now? Pays the bills. Not good enough. <laughs> Pays the bills. You're gonna die. It's gonna happen eventually. You want, like, seriously, like, I, what more do you need? This is it. This is amazing. You are alive, breathing in the world, and you're just paying the bills. Come on, man. Fucking go nuts. How often do you work? Five days a week, Monday to Friday. Five days a week, Monday to Friday. Like, long hours. It'd be hard work too, yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah no. Depends on the day. Right. Do you want this? Yeah. You do? How bad? I'm willing to go for it. Yeah? Go for it again. Yeah? Well, if you've got the motivation to wake up in the morning, Monday to Friday, and go and pack and send boxes, you need that fucking motivation to get up and go and do what you actually want to fucking do. Whatever you're digging into in the morning to get up and do what you fucking hate, you need to fucking dig into the exact same pile of fucking gold to get up and fucking go race. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where to go to from there. I just want you to have a fucking good life, dude. Maybe my opinion's totally fucking wrong. Could be totally off topic. I know I've just fucking ripped you up out of the crowd and tore you to fucking shreds. <laughs> Told you you're gonna die and then I'll fucking piss you off. Yeah, shit happens. <laughs> what do you reckon? Do you wanna do it? Yeah. Okay, what do you do now? What do you fucking wake up tomorrow morning and do? Go have, a, go have a look at the car, see what can improve. Go look at your car. And see what you can improve, yeah. Yep. And then if you don't have enough money to do that, what do you do then? Save up the dosh and keep going. Yep. Maybe cut back on a couple of things, save a bit more money. It's always a good idea. Yep. All right. Well, let's do this again in a year, and you better fucking come here in a fucking spoofed up car out the front, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll go, fuck, he did it. And if you didn't do it, then you better fucking package yourself up and deliver yourself here instead <laughs> in a box. Thank you very much, mate. You can take a seat. <laughs> Sorry to do that. Is that all right? Yeah, all right, cool. Does anyone have any questions at all? For fuck's sake, ask me something. I need something to fucking fire me up. Let's go. Yes, good. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to stand up and say it? It's a bit personal. How personal? Okay, we'll find out in a minute, all together. All right, let's go. Hello. Hello, what's your name? G. G, g'day G. Hi. Um, so I'm writing a paper right now on um, like the prescription of SRIs to youth, so the antidepressants. And I know in like a podcast you mentioned that you were on them for like a few years. So I was just kind of wondering about what your experience was like and when you got off them, kind of what the difference you felt was. Because um, yeah, in my paper right now, like. A lot of the reviews that I've found, it, they shouldn't be given to people that are like 12, 13, and then yep. they're on them for like eight years. Yep. So just wondering about your experience with that. Um, well, thanks. Uh, I was really lucky. You can sit down if you want to sit down. I was, I was really lucky. Uh, if you don't know what SSRIs are, SSRIs are a type of antidepressants. They're probably the most prescribed ones. Just so happens that all the school shooters and shit like that seem to be prescribed to the hills with this exact medication. Not sure if there is a correlation there. Um, possibly. Um, it, a lot of people call them suicide tablets, really, because the, the reverse effect on them is that most people that are committing suicide on themselves have been or committing suicide on themselves. <laughs> Not something to laugh at, but anyway. People that commit suicide, a lot of them are, are on these... Drugs. Well, that's what I'm writing about. So, like, they were showing that a lot of... Do you want to jump on the mic just so that we capture it for the show? Um, yeah, so, like, what I'm writing about right now is they did this paper and they found that, like, a lot of the kids that are on them, because they're not teaching them how to deal with their illness, right? So, yeah. they, the drugs are, like, a really short-term cure for a lifelong fucking problem. Yeah. So, they get off the drugs and then they, they don't know what to do. And yeah. then, obviously, they... 
don't have the coping mechanisms, don't have the strategies to deal with anything, and now they're not on these drugs. And obviously, they're going on them at such a important part of their life. You know, all these hormonal changes are happening, your brain's doing all this crazy shit. So then they go off them, and that's all they've had. Like, through puberty, they've been on these yep. crazy fucking drugs. Yeah. And now they're off them, and they're just like... Yeah, okay. So my experience with it, my parents put me on these drugs. Like, it, the process was amazing, because it was like... Josh is anxious, he doesn't want to go to school. And it's like, oh, no, dad's beating the shit out of you, mum, beating the shit out of me, the house is fucked, everything's fucked, I don't want to go to school. I wasn't fucked up, it was the environment that I lived in that was fucked up. But, again, it was, it was an easy cure to like, okay, this kid is like timid and, and worried about the world around him, right? Everything that I knew from zero to 13 came crashing down. We lived in a very good family, we made, you know, had good money, everything like that, and then just over, like yeah. that. Um... So I went on them and it was great at the start because for so long I wasn't able to go to the movies with my friends, I couldn't go to the shopping centre, I couldn't leave my house, I couldn't go to school, I couldn't do anything. I was petrified of everything. And that's literally part of why me getting on stage and doing this for such a long time became a thing because it became such an annoyance that my life was being, you know, that it was so detrimental to me that it was more like, well fuck, if I'm scared of someone at my school or if I'm scared to go to the shops, then if I get on stage and talk to people, then fucking I can do anything, all right? Were you, like, when you were smoking a lot of weed, were you doing that when you got off them? No. I was smoking, I was smoking a lot of weed. I mean, a lot of weed. A shit ton of weed. I reckon I could fucking bang out any of you cunts, right? <laughs> it's the one, like, claim to fame that I have. A lot of weed... I was drinking a lot of alcohol, yeah. I was on antidepressants, and I moved to LA for a little bit of time and, uh, and was taking a bit of Adderall and Valium and Xanax, right? So I was, I, but I didn't even know, and I went on, I did steroids. I injected, uh, when I was 18, I, I bought steroids. Don't know why, that's, it's clearly, that's clearly how insecure I was with myself at the time, that I thought all my mates that I was friends with, they were all on steroids, so I thought it was normal, I didn't know that it was a, you know, as uh, taboo as it actually is now. But, uh, yeah, so, you know, when you're playing with steroids as well, you're, you're fucking with your hormones, you know, it's all, it's all sort of over the place. So uh, I spent one night, when I was 18, I was maybe two weeks after I turned 18, I moved to Sydney. I was on these tablets, I was smoking weed, I was doing all this, and then one night uh, I ended up, oh, and it was a morning. Um, I remember waking up. Never felt like this before. This is during, like, you know, you cunts would have known at me at this point. But I remember waking up and I was shaking and I was, like, crying. I was like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. But I'm like, all I, I, I think I need a Valium or something. And I wasn't taking Valium or Xanax then, but I needed a Benzo or something that I knew could just, like, fucking zonk me. Because I was just so petrified. And I walked to the doctor's office in Newtown and walked in and I said, can I please just get, like, a Serapax, a Valium, like, just something to calm me down, and he said no, and I was sitting there, cry, like, bawling my eyes out in his face, I'm like, I cannot leave here, I cannot face the fucking world right now, please, I'm going to die, like, everything was crushing down on me, right? So this is when you got off them? No, this is while I was on them, but I was obviously interacting with a lot of different things that I didn't know would affect with it. Uh, I got off them probably two years ago, and that was more, uh, my main concern as well was, because I was on them from such a young age, I didn't know what the world was going to be like. Yeah. I remember the first, after the first five days of coming off these tablets, I remember literally looking at the sky and I went, fuck, it's blue. Because you just, you don't care. You, because the idea of these tablets, if you don't understand how they work, they, you, you know, basically if you've got bipolar, you know, you, your levels are going up and down like that in your brain, your serotonin and stuff like that. You're either happy, you're sad, you're, you're manic almost, right? With anxiety, they're constantly sort of low and you, you're in the worst parts of yourself the entire time. And the same with depression. What these tablets do is just lay them out flat. You're never happy. You're never sad. It's just like you're, just, you're a zombie. You're a zombie. But it was great at the start. Don't get me wrong. I fucking could yeah. start going to school. My confidence came out. I didn't give a shit anymore, right? But then it started to affect me probably about a year on. I, I was, my behavior was extremely reckless. Uh, and it was a very live fast, die young mentality because I didn't feel anything. Yeah, when you got off them, did you go through like almost like a back stage where you were all of a sudden like, because you don't feel anything for eight years? 
and then all of a sudden you're just like, oh my god, like this is what being sad feels like. This is what being happy feels like. Yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like emotions, fucking amazing, right? Because the only emotion I knew when I was on them was being s- severely sad, but never like happy. Yeah. Right. And I think it's kind of being good because I'm never happy anyway in the sense of I, I'm someone that will smell the roses for two seconds and then I want to get fucking straight back into it, right? Absolutely. I don't want to stick around and celebrate and jack each other off. Good work. Let's move the fuck along. What the fuck are we doing Monday, right? Mm. So that's probably been the one good thing that came out of it. But it's a really touchy subject because you're not supposed to talk about it. And if you do, because there's just so much fucking money involved because it's just the most prescribed medication probably in the world other than opium and stuff like that, or opiates. Um, but thank you for asking it. Did I feel better? Fuck yeah, I do. It's the best thing I ever did. If you're on them, try and get off them. Try and wean yourself off them and figure out how the fuck to deal with life. I know that's... Don't take that advice. I'm not a fucking medical professional. I can see that in the YouTube comments. You're fuck, cunt. Fucking hell. Some cunt will get off them and they'll go shoot up a school. It'll be my fault. Or YouTube. Um, heavy. That happened today. Uh... They fucking demonetize my videos as well. Fuck them. Um, <laughs> I think one person died. I'm not sure if it was anyone, if it was just the shooter. If it was just the shooter, really funny joke. It was. No one else died. All right, we're cool. All right, not going to hell. <laughs> Does anyone else want to ask anything while we're here? Yep, g'day. Jump on up. Come on down. G'day. What was your name again? Uh, Tamara. Tamara. G'day, Tamara. How you doing? Um, good. <laughs> um, so my question isn't as deep as that one, yep. but I just wanted to know what you think happens um, life after death and if you think that our loved ones, when they pass, if they're still always around us and that they give us signs when they pass. Okay. If you didn't hear that, um, she just said, what, what do I think happens life after death, right? And if our loved ones are still around or where the fuck do we go? Heaven, hell. Can, do you mind me asking if you're religious at all? Um, I'm not really that religious. Obviously, my family is. Yeah. Um, but my personal experience is, obviously, my dad passed away a couple of years ago. So, me personally, I think that when our loved ones pass, they still hang around. And I still think every now and then I get signs and stuff. Right. So, I was just wondering if anybody else gets the same thing or... Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Thank you for that. Uh, you're okay. more than welcome to take a seat. Um... I think, do you guys ever think about this, life after death and, yeah? Um, it's an interesting one. It's one that I've pondered many of times uh, four cones in. <laughs> Not so much anymore, but I have had a lot of time to think about it. Um, I used to really love romanticising with the idea of spirits and, you know, the, the, you know, all that sort of shit, right? And I still do to an extent. Do I believe there's a heaven and hell? No, uh, there's not. Um, but I do believe that humans in general operate at either uh, higher vibrational frequencies or lower vibrational frequencies. You walk into a room and straight away, if someone's in a fucked off mood, they haven't told you that they're in a shitty mood. Your senses are picking up their senses and it's translating to us in our brain through their aura or their frequency or whatever the fuck you want to call it. That person is not in a good mood. All right? So these things do exist. Now, generally, people that operate on these lower levels are the ones that would fall into what, in, in religious terminology, they would call hell or demons or bad people, right? People that are shit, the murderers, all that sort of stuff, the rapists, etc. right? Your higher, your higher operating beings are your prophets, right? Your people that are, you know, every one of you, I guess, um, we, are, we can all choose to be a prophet of some sort. And when I say prophet, I don't mean fucking, you know, one of these cunts that's bestowing everyone and, and, and whatnot. But do I believe that other realms exist that, that our souls live in? Is, is that essentially the question? Yeah? Okay, here's an analogy for you. Someone that probably is into science will be able to debunk this, but this is what I like to believe. Um, you ever get an x-ray? Yeah, we've all had an x-ray. We know what an x-ray is. So there's a machine out there, a machine, a man-made machine, that's able to scan us, scan our body, and it's able to go through what we can see, right? And it sees our bones, just our bones, that's it. We can't see it with our eyes, right? But a machine can. So if a machine can do that, then that technically means that that dimension exists somewhere. 
We can't see it, but a machine can, right? So it does exist. If we were the machine, our eyes would be able to see that, right? So within that, we have to remember as well that human beings can only see like 0.00001% of a fucking pinhead of visual light. Cats can see more than what we can. Dogs can. That's why those cunts are always fucking looking around. <laughs> right? So is there a possibility? Yeah. I fucked with a Ouija board once. That fucking worked. That scared the shit out of me. I still got a fucking crystal next to me bedside that I'm sitting there holding every night because I'm like, Jesus Christ, the demons are coming to get me. Could be that or could be the weed-induced fucking schizophrenia and paranoia. But yes, yeah, I think so. Who here doesn't think so? Who here has a different outlook on that? Just by a raise of hands. No? All right, cool. All right, thanks. Anyone else? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, okay, good on you. Jump on up. Come on down. What was your name, big dog? Alex, man. Alex. G'day, Alex. Give Alex a round of applause. Okay. Sorry. And what was it again? Tamara. Give Tamara a round of applause as well. I forgot to do it. All right, Alex. I was just wondering, like, uh, oh, that's loud. I'm um, louder than I thought. Um, I was wondering, like, as a stand-up comic and everything, like, uh, what do you think about, like, uh topics and stuff being out of bounds for comics or do you think it should be free reign like you know what i mean like yeah uh, uh, like political correctness yeah exactly pc okay. culture and stuff like, yeah, yeah okay uh right well well with pc culture political correctness any of that sort of stuff uh i think and it's funny because i i don't really give a fuck if you know if this comes back to bite me because you're not allowed you're not allowed to say it but um I think there's a massive difference between being a cunt yeah. and being politically incorrect or, or a little bit edgy, okay? Like, we were talking about this the other day on my podcast, uh, which it hasn't been released yet, this episode, but we were talking about this and we were talking about, uh, like, people that make jokes of the Catholic Church and, uh, you know, being rapists and pedophiles and stuff like that and, and making jokes of that and that you're making fun of the victims, it's like, well, no. There, there was a comedian, uh, oh, fuck, what's his name? Hannibal. Hannibal Buress. I don't know if you know who this guy is. But this is the guy that came out and made a joke about Bill Cosby being a rapist, not, not making fun of raping and raping being a hilarious thing, but making a joke of the fact that Bill Cosby's a rapist and he's still doing what he does. And that was the fall that Bill Cosby had. He was the fucking tick on the list, right, for all the dominoes to fall. So I think with comedy, here, here's a great analogy. This is not my analogy. It's Jerry Seinfeld's, but it's fucking amazing, right? I'm sure you guys have seen a comedy show before, right? Tonight, a little bit comedy, probably not mainly comedy. But this is what it is, right? So I'm up here. I walk out, right? My music plays. I come out. I tell jokes, right? Now, laughter is an involuntary reaction. It's a tick, right? You don't choose what you laugh at. You don't choose. It just fucking happens, right? So my job as a stand-up comedian is not to make you laugh. My job is to perform magic, right? I have to say things and not just make you have that laughter tick. I have to make you, 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 all of you have it at the same time, right? Magic, right? Then all of a sudden, some fuckwit at the back jumps up. We'll just use you as an example, you scary motherfucker. Some fuckwit jumps up, they start yelling something out. You're a fuckwit, right? They're drunk, right? So then everyone turns around, they go, oh, who's that, right? The illusion is broken, right? Now it's my job to fucking whip that cunt into fucking line, sit down, shut the fuck up, right? And then fucking herd you motherfuckers in. You guys keep laughing again. We're back in the delusion. Thank you very much. Good night. I leave and you guys go, what the fuck just happened? Right? So it's magic, right? It's not making fun. I, I don't think that there's any line that shouldn't be crossed as long as it's done in the right way and you're not being a fucking cunt about it. That's it. It's that simple. So no, I, I, I think everything's open, but I'm totally for free speech. Absolutely. If you're the most racist motherfucker around, get on the microphone. <laughs> Seriously, get on the microphone so that I have the fucking right to get on the microphone on the other end of the room and tell you you're a fucking racist piece of shit, all right? Yeah. Free speech, totally. Yeah. You can say whatever you want, but there's repercussions for yeah, what yeah, you yeah. say. That's all. 
I don't think we should have laws against it, though. There's like this, uh, I was reading today the, in Victoria, you know, the, I don't know if it's like Reclaim Australia or w one of those sort of fucking, you know, parties, but the main guy behind it, and he's been on a lot of ABC shows and that, and he's looking at possibly getting jail time for some of the stuff that he's said. I don't know what he said. I'm sure a lot of you will disagree with it. I'm sure a lot of you will agree with it. But no one should ever go to jail for voicing their opinion, ever. That's some Nazi fucking Germany shit. Seriously, that is fucking Nazi Germany shit. And that's what we're becoming in Australia. We're really hitting that level. We are nanny state as fuck. Yeah. I couldn't drink on fucking Friday. And wait, was it Friday or Saturday? Friday. Friday. I'm walking around, I want to drink. Like, we don't serve it. I'm like, why? Because it's Easter. It's, it's Easter weekend. I'm like, that's a religion. What the fuck are we going at b believing that we're like some secular society that has nothing to do with religion? And then on the day that isn't even fucking Easter, they're like, nah, can't. Fucking you got to wait till 12. <laughs> we were born alcoholics in this motherfucking country, <laughs> all right? I reckon you could go to Pyong fucking Yang <laughs> at 3 a.m. in the morning and get a shot on fucking Easter Friday. Get fucked. <laughs> so I went and had a steak at Harry's. Anyway... <laughs> Thanks for your question anyway, dude. Oh, Alex, yeah? Do you have yeah. anything else? Oh, well, I was just going to say, um, yep. because you brought up Hannibal Buress, did you see the, see the thing uh, where he uh, was warned because he had a very Christian audience, and they were like, okay, just be wary about the whole Christian jokes kind of thing. So the first thing he did when he came on stage was like, so you're fuck kids, right? Yes. And then they, he got kicked off. And yeah. I'm like, that's awesome. That's amazing. Like, well, I not fucking like, kids. Like, that's yeah, well. <laughs> you get that straight. <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, I know, I know what you're saying. That's yeah. literally what, what, what started the conversation in, yeah. in the podcast was, was that exact thing. Okay. Um, no, I, I don't think that that should be... I think when, like, I think the statistic was... Uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, but it was high, but I feel like I want to say it was 70%. I might be way off. But 70% of Catholic priests in Australia at one point were all molesting children. 70%. I don't give a fuck if it's fucking 5%. If it's 5%, it's organised and there's something going on. I did a podcast with Gretel Colleen, uh, who used to host Big Brother and stuff like that. And I was talking to her after the podcast and she was very, uh, you know, very uh, liberal and, and didn't want to, you know, didn't want to think anything bad was happening in the world. And I'm sure she does, but she, her outlook on it was quite different to mine. And I said, did you know recently in the news that uh, like seven Catholic priests in the Vatican were busted having a gay orgy and taking drugs by the Vatican police? And she goes, no way, you're reading fake news. You're on some Alex Jones shit. And I'm like, no, 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 no. This was in the Herald Sun, bitch, right? <laughs> there are things going on in the world and the world is not black and white like we like to think. I used to fall so far down that fucking conspiracy. Like, I would sit there all night and I'd be looking, 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 looking. And I was getting paranoid about the whole thing. I'm sitting there covering up my webcam. I'm like, Jesus, they're fucking watching me. I know things that other people don't. Like, you get into this mentality. And then you just tap out because you go, eh, most of the leaders are fucking rapists and Satanists. So whatever, we'll just fucking deal with it, yeah? Probably. I don't know. Bill Clinton, probably. Anyway, thanks for that one. Yeah, I'm... Oh, you got another one? Feel saying, free. I just want to let you know I'm not leaving. I'm just going to the bathroom. Oh, you're just going for a piss. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, he just went, nah, fuck you. Wrong answer. You can get fucked, mate. I'll be asking for a refund at the door. Thank you. How long, how long have we been going for, Connor? Okay, good. I just want to make sure with batteries. All right. Well, um, anyone, this is probably the last one I'll take. So if anyone wants to jump up and, and we'll do that and then we'll... Uh, Talk some shit and I'll wrap it up um, and say good ideas. What, uh, anyone else? Yeah, let's go. Let's go, sister. What's your name? Tegan. Tegan. Give Tegan a round of applause, everybody. Hi. Hello, oh, Tegan. Shit, that is loud here. That's no, right. I, but I can't hear you, so talk <laughs> oh, into okay. it. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. Um, I have just recently started a new job yep. and I work with all males. And I've never really been in that environment before. They're all sexist, they're all racist, they're all homophobic. Being gay myself, hearing shit like that is a little touchy. You know, tradies come in, it's a lot of fuck this, fuck that, fucking whatever, fag this, fag that. Like, hearing it is shitty, obviously. Mm -hmm. 
how would you deal with that? Obviously, being around it all the time. Any advice on keeping my mouth shut? How, okay. <laughs> how would I deal with people saying things that I don't agree with? Yeah, and okay. not getting myself in trouble and not getting myself fired <laughs> in retaliating in a way. Stop caring. Okay. Just stop caring. Good advice. Like it's, to like, it's up to you if you yeah. want to take that on or not. Yeah. But I hate to be the fucking breaker of bad news. You're not going to change the world. No. That's just how they are. Yeah. So it's it's essentially up to you to either go. You can you can try and fight that moral battle, which I've tried to do as well before, and and, and want to change them and, and and whatnot. But they're going to double the fuck down on what they think yeah. if you come walking in. The enemy, right? Yeah. A lesbian, the only girl that's working there. Not the enemy, but the person that they are obviously don't necessarily yeah, agree with. Yeah, the outcast, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same as the vegans that come in and protest <laughs> at a fucking meat yeah. restaurant. Get the fuck away, I'm ordering another steak. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Don't care. Okay. Don't care. I know, I know it fucking sucks. Yeah. But also remember, going back to what we said before, we, the reality that we see is only the real, reality that our beliefs are, right? Yeah. So be very, very careful as well to assume that anyone is a racist, a sexist, a homophobe or whatever. Yeah. Okay? Because we've all said terrible things in our lives. That's true, yeah. 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 I've probably said the word fag before. Oh, and I probably meant it have. in the wrong connotation. <laughs> yeah. All right? Not that I knew that it meant anything bad. Later on you learn, but they probably come from an era where it's the exact same thing. They don't understand the weight because they didn't grow up understanding what that was. Yeah. That's their vision of the world. Everyone is like 35-year-olds older than exactly. me. Exactly. So it's, like... it's like when people <laughs> say Trump's a racist. It's like, fucking hell, he's 70. That's all the motherfucker knows. <laughs> True though. <laughs> but my question to that is, maybe he's not. Maybe he's not. When did anyone call Donald Trump a racist before he ran for president? I guess Never. It, I guess it just wasn't like publicly out there that. But what? Of but what he okay. Was but my question is, what? What do you have on Donald Trump that says he's a racist? Nothing really. So, you can't throw that word at people. That, I really get fucked off with the throwing around of racist, homophobe, sexist, what, like, these labels are exactly what people are fighting against. We're human beings. That's it. So, I, I did a podcast recently with a prostitute, right? Great podcast, by the way. Yeah, it was a fucking good one. She was into <laughs> urethra play, which is... <laughs> But I had a friend message me, and, and she's a great friend, and, um, and she said to me, uh, she said, because she was talking about, the, the prostitute was talking about, look, either as a woman I'm going to get exploited, or I choose to exploit. And she said, I choose to exploit. I went, okay, that's, that's interesting, right? Because I, I mean, this is naive of me, but I look at the world not as men and women, but, but human beings, like I said before, right? So I'm not looking... Uh, in my head, I'm going, how about we just don't exploit anyone ever? Like, there, there is a third answer to that. But she said, uh, she said, uh, women are uh, exploited, so I choose to be exploited. And I said, well, and men as well, right? Yeah. Now, my, my friend messaged me and she said, uh, do, you, do you disagree that women are, you know, disproportionately ex uh, exploited more than what men are? And I'm like, no, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. You're putting that in a, in a different narrative to what I was saying. What I'm saying is men are exploited as well. There's a minority yeah. in that situation as well. Where you are a minority, there are men in minorities as yeah. well. All right? So when there's, we're fighting for equal rights, I think that maybe third or fourth wave feminism and, and inside of that you've got... It's, it's slowly starting to eat itself up. I'm for fucking equal rights for everyone... Mm. But what I think is an absolute disaster is when you've got, um, you know, you, you, I've heard about this, this happening in like the trans community, for example. There's men that have transitioned into women that now are upset and are fighting with the, the women because they don't think they have the same rights as cis women. Yeah. And then you have uh, black men that have transitioned into black females that are fighting with the white men that have transitioned into white females because they don't feel like they have the same... And it's just eating its fucking self up. Let's get every motherfucker together, don't be a cunt, and live. 
I know that's very idolistic, but it is possible. We're just attacking. Yeah. Jesus, I just want equality. Like, for fuck's sake, that's what everyone's at. Yeah. But it's okay. Just try and look at the world maybe in a way, like I did when I was going down this conspiracy route, with a bit more optimism. There's more fucking good people out there than what there is bad. Yeah, definitely. There really is. Yeah. We're just looking for bad all the time. Yeah. Yeah? Yep. All right. Thank you very awesome. much. Thank you. All right. Heavy. All right. Well, guys, um, I, I appreciate you all uh, coming out tonight. I want to get the chance to fucking meet you all. If you have to fuck off, that's fine. Uh, but I want to come down and, and meet you all and, and have a chat to you all individually. I, wanted, I do want to say uh, we wanted to do this episode uh, as our yearly, you know, our one-year thing. For the first time ever in my life, we've posted a video every single week, right? Yes, thank you, Dad. <laughs> Mom and Dad. Um, now, this whole journey for me, uh, I mean, t to, to be totally honest with you, I, uh, this will be the last time I'm, not the last time, but this will be the last year I'm ever doing stand-up comedy. Um, I realised, like I was talking about before, I've been selling people nothing but, you know, just come and I, you, you might laugh, okay? Uh, but I've realised that if I can do that, then I could probably fucking sell anything else. Hollywood and fame doesn't end well for anyone. It doesn't look good to me, right? Now, when you see Beyonce and Jay-Z, right, Kanye and all of them holding up the fucking Illuminati sign, right, the Illuminati don't give a shit about them. They're not worried about fucking Beyonce's 50 million fucking dollars. They got billions and fucking trillions, all right? So I'm in that fucking level where... Once upon a time, I wanted to be the cunt that was fucking making the movies and being the big fucking comedy movie star, Seth Rogen. But now I've realised that if I can get this far on absolute delusion, then by God, I'm going to be the motherfucker that owns the studio. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Why not? Go nuts. You're going to fucking die. All right? Yeah, all right. Guys, thank you so much for coming out tonight. Lovely to meet you all. I'll be down the back after this. Uh, you're watching The Josh Wade Show. We'll see you next week. Thank you very much.